Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Mary presents an introduction to addictions, recorded on the 14th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Who thinks we should do one day for every group that we have so that you can have the rest of the group to deal with that first day and then, yeah. <laughs> That's the cool thing about it going on YouTube though, isn't it? You can go back and have your mini assistance group again, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's been doing their homework? Top of the class, everyone. A students. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we. Jesus is the chief audience cam man today. He doesn't have to talk. All good. All good. Okay, let's get underway because it'd be great to get some personal truth sessions in today, wouldn't it? So we'll try and be succinct. It's hard to rush through all the important bits, though. Yeah. All right. Today's day is all about addictions. And I'm just the warm-up to Cornelius. <laughs> and what I want... If you notice, the last couple of days, we've been trying to get you guys to connect with, OK, we've got all this theory in our head. What does it feel like? What does it all feel like? So my question for you guys is, what does wanting an addiction feel like? Felix? Um, it, it, feels, it, it feels like it's going to be really painful until I get it. Okay, what do you mean by that? Um, like, unless you get it? Like, I, I really, unless I, unless I get it, I, I can't be settled. You can't be settled, like, okay? I, so it's sort it's, of a desperate... It's always going to be there and it's going to hurt. It's like a pulling, yeah. desperate feeling, yeah. yep. Okay, good description. Yeah. Uh, Eloise, you got another description for it? So I'm going to put desperate up here. Okay. As well as desperate, it's like demanding and like this uh, frenzy. It's sort of like... Frenzy, yeah. Like a piranha, you know, it's yeah. like... <laughs> Give me, give me, give, give me, me, give me, give me now, now, now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you want more and more and more and exactly. more. Exactly, it's like there's a vortex in you. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Yeah. You're like the cookie monster that can't yeah. get enough. And yeah. you kind of aren't ever satiated. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, exactly, exactly. So what was the first word you said? Desperate. I'm uh, gonna desperate. Uh, no, 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 you desperate said was thing. And, um, demand. Yeah, demanding. Demand, okay, I'll put that one up here as well. And... Uh, yeah, Joellen? <clears throat> to me, it feels like a compulsion. A, a pushing, compulsion. A pushing feeling. Yes, that is a very good word for it. Let's call it compulsion. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to take away desperate and demand and just call the feeling a compulsion. Does everyone agree it feels like that? I gotta have it, and it's pulling on me, and I'm, I'm I don't have any control. Yeah. Okay. Now, what happens with this compulsion? There's usually when we're in this. What I'm going to be describing to you is like a cycle of addiction, if you like. So when we're in this cycle of addiction, there's two things that can happen. What are they? We feel the compulsion, we act on it. There's two, two possibilities. Cecily? We either have it satisfied or not. Yeah, exactly. What do you, what do you call it when you don't have it satisfied? Let's call it we get it met or not met. Is that a fair enough description? All right. So 
Let's go Met here. I'm trying to keep this on one half of the board. Might be a bit tricky. And I'm not happy with that. So it gets met or not met. Okay. How does that feel? Let's talk about how it feels on the met side. What do you feel when the addiction gets met? Uh, yep. Kate, Kate, sorry. Yeah. It uh, just puts a dampener on the frenzy or fully suppresses it, depending on... <laughs> Do you think it puts a dampener on the frenzy? I don't Probably know. Probably more, it just like fully it suppresses it. Like fuels the frenzy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try someone else, Matthew. Um, it feels like a whole load of relief. Relief? Okay. Let's start describing some of these words. So we feel relief. What else do we, might we feel, Barbara? You get the warm and fuzzy feeling. The fuzzy, warm feeling, yep. Oops. Warm and fuzzy. How else does it feel? Mel? Um, a safety, like a, I yeah. feel safe and, yeah, safe. Yes, I often feel this sort of, ah, oh, safe. Now everything in the world's okay. Um, yep, so safe. What else? If we go to Raj and then we go to Laura. I have to confess, it feels a little naughty. Naughty, yeah. ah. This is another type of feelings we can start to have, can't we? Now, why does it feel a bit naughty? Well, perhaps it's because I really know that I shouldn't, but I will. You'll want to and you're going to. <laughs> okay, so I agree. After some time, after we've heard some divine truth and it's all floating around in the head up there, we go, oh... Maybe this is a bit bad, but we'll go ahead. Okay, so naughty. Naughty but nice. Ah, it's a good way of, that's a good way of describing it. I'm putting that up here. Because at this stage, there's still a lot of, this, we're still in a cycle. Where we're like, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's naughty, but it's nice, and I'm going to keep going. Okay, Laura. Uh, I feel loved. Loved, yes. And I'm going to put that in inverted commas. It's loved. We, we do totally believe it's loved at, when we're in the throes of addiction. Okay, what else? Uh, if we go to Alwyn and we go to Denise. I'm in my comfort zone. Comfort zone. So we're feeling comfortable. Yep. Denise? Happy. Happy? Falsely. Happy, yeah. Okay. Okay, what else? Oh, who are we? You know, David, that's right, I didn't. That makes me feel stronger. Stronger. And is it a real strength, do you think? No. No, but it's, it does give you that sense of like, yeah. Well, now that I've got my fix, I can go back out in the world and keep going again. Right, this is what I needed in order to keep going forward, okay. I was stronger, yeah. And David just alluded to the thing that happens next. When we get it met, we feel all these awesome feelings. We go, ah, oh, it's okay to keep that one, isn't it? I'm going to go back in to life still having this compulsion. So we stay in a cycle, don't we? And in fact, what happens with all the false beliefs that are driving our addiction? <coughs> Barbara? They're just reinforced again. Yes. My false beliefs are reinforced and I continue on my merry way. 
Okay, all right. That's great, guys. I think that's a good description of a lot of the feelings that we have when we're in this cycle of addiction, if we call it. I'm just going to put up about our false beliefs because that's an important point. So our false beliefs are reinforced. Rachel? I just wanted to say that I, uh, I'm not, well, I, I feel disappointed actually when my addictions get met. I instantly feel like it's not satisfying and I feel really disappointed. So you feel a bit, what do you feel disappointed about? Just, it feels unsatisfying actually, like deeply unsatisfying and that's, you know, never going to be met and I can't meet it and <laughs> it feels... You know, that so isn't that when your addiction doesn't get met? I don't maybe. I don't know, it doesn't feel like I don't maybe. No, no, it's okay. Are you saying it feels like your addiction is never gonna get met? Or what's the thing that feels unsatisfying? The thing, yeah, that I'm trying to get met or that the feeling that that's trying to be met, I guess. So, for example, you're trying to get loved and so you enter this addiction and then now yeah. there's this feeling of like... Dissatisfaction, this isn't love. yeah. 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 Okay, so what started to happen for you, do you think? If you think back to what Jesus talked about yesterday when he was talking about deconstructing the facade, he was talking about you go through a process and this, by the way, is something that I'll talk about again. I'm getting up again today. But this process you go through of intellectual awareness, intellectual desire to change. Now we start to have a soul awareness, but it's not yet a soul desire to change. I think that's what's happening for you, Rachel, yeah. around just, your addiction. Yeah. So that process that Jesus outlined yesterday counts for pretty much the deconstruction of anything that's in your soul that's out of harmony with love. You go through that process. So you're right. Sometimes... When we're in this cycle, it ends up actually feeling a bit sleazy. Yeah, okay. Bob? But also going on from that, I feel some addictions, and maybe all of them, there um, is insatiable the right word? Like you really can't fulfill them ever, so yeah. they feel as if you yep. can't fulfill them. Um, you, you are drawn, aren't you? You get this feeling, but it's not a big enough fix, yes, is it? it's not. So no. you have to go back into yes, the compulsion. Yes, so the cycle keeps on going. It keeps but, on kicking around. But it around. never gets fulfilled. No. To a full satisfied level. Unless it's chocolate and you picked out for too long, yes. <laughs> but what happens a week later? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Because really, it hasn't satisfied. Yeah. It hasn't satisfied from so the soul perspective. So you can't satisfy it ever, really. No, well, only you keep going back into compulsion. Yes. You think you've got a little bit yep. of it. And then, no, oh, it's not there. It's exactly like that. Yep. That is yep. an addiction at play, really. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we go back to David, and then we'll go forward to Matthew. Yes, sometimes, a few times, it feels kind of empty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Matt. Are we talking questions or still on feelings? Still on feelings. Okay, because uh, I think we've yep. I think we've covered the feelings now. So we we've talked about how yeah it feels loved and wonderful. Sometimes it feels a bit icky when we've got a bit of a uh, growing awareness that oh uh, something's not right here. But it is pretty much insatiable anyway. So we might feel a brief moment of satisfaction but then we need to go back into it in order to keep trying to chase that feeling of satisfaction if you like okay all right good one you guys know about addictions <laughs> up here <laughs> okay what happens when our when our compulsion we act upon it and it's not met Vanessa I feel like this one for me goes on both sides. I feel, so there's anger, but I feel justified and righteous is more Ooh. the, you know. Yeah. Yes. So even 
<clears throat> in meeting it, I'm justifying the meeting of it and, yeah, I deserve this for sure. Yeah, so when you get it met, you feel, I deserve it. Yeah. When you don't course. get it met, you feel, this is unjust. Yes, I do. I should be getting it. And in fact, yes, most people feel like that when their addiction is not being met. So we feel this injustice feeling, indignant feeling. What? Okay, so... What else? Uh, if we go to St. Alan, I haven't heard from you. I feel irritable and annoyed. And even angry. Angry. Yep. Pissed off. Yep. I'll just put it all under anger. Yep. That's, a, as we know, very common. All right, let's go to Sheridan and hear to Graham. Uh, it could be under anger, but I feel like I pull out the big guns and start threatening. Ah. Like, you, you better so, do it. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good one. We get into threats. And what goes with threats generally? bit of bribery, a bit of manipulation, all, all done in this, I'm justified in doing this, you know. Yeah. So threats, manipulation. Okay, Graham. Um, if I don't get angry, sometimes I get very moody, bit withdrawn and sulky. Oh, yeah. The old, I'm not angry, but I'm just withdrawn. I'm, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'm seething. I just don't want to talk right now. I am seething. Seething. Yeah. So it's another expression of rage, isn't it? It's just a passive-aggressive rage. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Okay, if we go, Laura. Um, I get this desolate, empty, and then panic, like I wouldn't know what to do with the with the, that emptiness. So it's okay, panic. so you're kind of panicking, and that's really feeling the compulsion, isn't it? Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. I want it more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. The panic it's is not... Too. It's a shock. Like, shock, shock, right? Yeah. And let's not confuse panic with fear, because they're different. Panic is actually not being humble to fear. It's not being soft to fear. It's going, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Isn't that what panic's like? Yeah. And isn't that the complete opposite of soft? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I've got, to, I've got to do something, I've got to do something, I've got to do something, I've got to do something. Which is actually a lot more like compulsion, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so panic. What about, okay, what about this one? <sighs> It's my addiction. No, I've got to feel about it. Okay, fine. Oh. Have a big cry. What are we really doing? Having a tantrum. Yeah. And what about a really key one? Someone mentioned the opposite over here. This is what I see happening the most. Is that people feel... Mel? Um, well, usually for me, it's that, that whole totified, justified anger. Yep. Um, but also, too, then there's this anxiety and then it's damage control because I don't want to feel unloved. I don't want to feel hated. I don't want to feel... So definitely for me, it starts in that first one and, yep. and I often stay in it. But then once anxiety comes, it's damage control. So you want to act more. You want to get control of everything? Yeah, make it all right. Don't yeah. hate me. Like, yeah. yeah. So you almost go into some kind of placating sort of... Yeah, thing. but yeah. It usually in the past it's taken a lot to get to that point. You, like I can be stuck in that for years, like, you yeah. know. This so, one. Yeah. But do you think that the placating is actually dealing with the addiction? Isn't it is more it, attempt to control how people are feeling about you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we want to control, we want to yeah. regain control. Yeah. Or... 
perceived control, let's call it that, because it's not really real control you have when yeah. you're in your addictions. And then it goes back, for me, back to that safety. Okay, I feel safe now. So that, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> So demand for control, and the one that no one has mentioned, Deirdre, you want to have a go? Unloved. Unloved. This is what I see happen for most people, even when they don't revert to these other things. When an addiction doesn't get met, they feel, oh, I'm not being loved. This is horrible. Okay. And I'm going to put that in inverted commas as well, because as we hopefully know intellectually, when someone doesn't meet our addictions, they're a lot closer to, well, they're loving us in that moment, aren't they? And what usually happens after that? We feel this, we get into these kind of emotions. Matt? Usually one of two things, we'll fight harder to get that addiction or we'll, we'll swap it out and we'll try and find another addiction. Exactly. Any addiction, any addiction. Just any addiction, take right. It away. I can't get chocolate, I'm going for coffee. <laughs> if I can't get that, I'm going for a big warm hug of someone who's just going to tell me everything's all right. doesn't matter, I need yeah. something. I need something, yeah. So we go, we stay in this cycle. We haven't shifted. We just go, I want, I'm, if I can't get it from you, I'm getting it from you. If I can't get it from this thing, I'm going to get it from this thing. And if I can't get it at this shop, I'm going to walk 5Ks to the other shop. <laughs> Barbara? More on an emotional addiction and not a physical addiction, um, self-pity is like if you don't get it met, I can go, I can go into self-pity. Self-punishment. and Go into my cave yes. and don't want to come out. Yeah. So is that that's not going back to that though, is it? It's not going, is it? Well, the you certainly haven't challenged it. The compulsion <laughs> remains within you. That's true. Yeah. You just you just engaged in another addiction. R right. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is, oh, I'm a terrible person, or oh, my life is terrible. You're not actually, even if you have a big cry about that. Yeah. Mine's not that. Mine is, you know, a bit of more probably more self punishment that. And that's why I go to my cave so I don't have to see anybody so I can punish myself. Yes. And yes. self-punishment is an addiction. Right. Okay. All right. Let me just tidy up this because it's staying all day. All right. Okay. Now, on this side, even if we have a big cry or a big punch of a punching bag or a big whatever release, <laughs> have we really progressed? Are we closer to truth? Are we closer to God? Are we closer to whatever is driving the compulsion? Okay. So on this side, no closer to truth. God or fear? It's a fairly damning kind of a, a diagram, isn't it? feels a bit oh, heavy. But you're very right, as a couple of you have said, it gets into a really frenzied state, doesn't it? And how do we end up feeling in our lives? When you're living in addiction all the time, what's life like? How do you feel? Christiana? A roller coaster. A roller coaster. So it's rapid and it's up and down, yep. It's fast paced, isn't it? Yes. Because there's always a compulsion in play. And what do you find that you're often busy, occupied, driven? frenzied, all of these things. So that's what I want to say about this. I'm trying to draw it in here somewhere. This part of the diagram is that it's frenzied and driven and it's 
just driven by the compulsion over and over and over again. Now, tell me we have another option. <laughs> Felix. Um, well, instead of, you know, when it doesn't get met, um, uh, trying to get it met again, I can just feel like, what I'm feeling, which is usually I, I feel like a lot of pain that it doesn't get mad. I can, I can just be humble to that feeling, which I don't often do. But <laughs> you don't want to do. <laughs> don't want to do yeah. yeah, and until you want to, you're not going to feel it. Yeah. But you're right. We have a choice. We have a choice here. When we first feel the compulsion, we have a choice when we feel it getting met. And we have a choice when we feel it not getting met. and that is to challenge the addiction. And I'm going to be talking more to you today about challenging, how to challenge an addiction. But before that, Cornelius is going to come and talk to you about some really important things that occur in this top half of the diagram, the compulsion phase of it all. Because guys, you are not going to get to, and let me just write it on the board, You are not going to get to challenging the addiction until you become really aware, intellectually and emotionally, of what is going on in this cycle in your lives. So Corny's going to come and talk to you about that more. And, favourite topic, in relation, addictions in relationships. Who thinks they could do with a bit of input on addictions in relationships? <laughs> Awesome. So one of you who didn't raise your hand, I'm sure you'll still get something from this discussion. <laughs> All right, so Courtney's going to come up very shortly and start that off with you, and then I'll be back afterwards to talk to you more about challenging addictions. All right, guys. Now, can you read what I've written on the board? Because it's staying all day. Can you read challenging? Is it too low? No? All right. Yep. Cable? Yeah, if we could just get a mic to Cavill. Um, whatever colour you've used above the challenging, um, it, I can't read it from this distance. This red? Yeah. Yeah, red. okay, all right. I'll do that in blue as well, hey? Thank you. Awesome. Okay, I'll sort that out. 